Uh, well, and just start a quick thanks to Commissioner Lucia, Perry, yourself, and the CCHA staff. Um, you know, another productive summer and, and just, you know, great things in place for the CCHA. So we're all looking forward to it. We appreciate the job of the league office there. I also want to just, uh, a quick thank you and, and um, a well wishes for the retirement of our athletic, athletic director, uh, Dr. David Diles, is uh, moving on to retirement. And I know he's looking forward to that. He'll be with us through November. Uh, but we want to thank him for the job he did here at Lake State over the last handful of years. Um, you know, some, some real stability brought to the department and, and the program, which is been great for all of us operating here. I think there might be news on athletic directors early as this week, uh, but Dr. Dials will continue on into uh, through October. So we want to wish him well and thank him for his time here. A um, lot, lot of transition here at Lake State right now with the athletic director. We're, we're in the middle of an interim president and a presidential search, and it kind of mirrors our locker room. You know, when we walk in right now, we've got 13 new faces in that locker room. And uh, there's a lot of change in that room as well. So we're, we're learning our guys each and every day. Uh, we've got 11 freshmen in the room, two transfers, and uh, there's a lot of different things going on there. So they'll be important. I know it's a class that's, that's pretty highly rated uh, through some different scouting services and some really good players in there. So they'll be a critical part of our ongoing season. But I think as always the case in college athletics, it's more about your returners, your upperclassmen. Um, you know, we'll want some of these young guys to spot in and compliment some of our guys, but it's the growth of our returners and our upperclassmen that's really going to get us out of what happened last year and move us forward. Uh, we're confident of that. Our returners have done a great job of kind of shaping our locker room, um, probably cleaning up some chemistry and some locker room issues that, that, that uh, lingered and were around last year. So we, we feel um, you know much different inside that room right now. Uh, I think we probably all feel that this time of year, but uh, we're optimistic about the group and, and really like where our locker room's at. So a couple of key guys I'll just highlight quickly there. Obviously, it all starts Starts in net typically Ethan Langenager, um, you know, and I, I don't, I didn't dig up the stats, but I know if we go back to maybe November, December on, I think he might end up leading leading the league in, in a few statistical categories with a great second half. Uh, so I think it's going to be really important for Ethan to pick up where he left off. He'll be a, a key part of our, our team early on as we we um, you know implement some new structure and system to our play and get the young guys and new faces on board and adjusted to college hockey for, for many of them. Um, you know, com uh, complimenting Ethan will be a couple of our leaders. Uh, our captain, Artie Borshoff, now an experienced senior defenseman, played a lot of critical roles and critical minutes for us. Um, you know, a really strong voice in our room. He's one of those guys that, that really, um, you know, has the leadership, has the respect of his teammates. So Artie Borshoff will be a big part of it. Assisting him with an A will be Grant Hinman. Um, you know, he's a guy that, that leads on and off the ice. He's a phenomenal student. Uh, he's great in the weight room and, and, a, and a great player on the ice. So two important defensemen playing in front of Ethan Langenager. And, and wearing letters for us are, are those guys. Um, we also have a transfer on the back end there, Nate Schweitzer out of Colorado College. Um, another guy that's played a lot of college hockey at a high level. Um, you know, th we think Nate will have the opportunity to step in and um, impact our lineup and, and help solidify, you know, what's going to be a little bit of a young and unproven decor and then a, a handful of freshmen, you know, trying to juggle and, and jostle for their positionings and where they fit in. Um, but those guys will be key on the back end there. Up front, another captain will have co-captains, uh, Harry Roy. Um, I believe he led our team in goals last year, uh, you know, has a great shot, great threat on the power play. So we're looking for Harry Roy to take a good step for us as well in, in terms of leading and on the ice. Uh, assisting him with an Anna's jersey is Dawson Tritt. Um, you know, Tritter, I think, at nine goals might be a leading returning goal scorer um, or, or point getter, uh, but Tritter probably could add about 15 or 20 goals last year, and we expect him to be one of those guys that really kind of explodes and uh, replaces some of what we lost and just emerges as an upperclassman that's going to lead us that way as well. Um, I think, you know, it'll probably be preempt a question here from somebody, but, uh, you know, I can go back probably six, eight years to when Diego Cugliata led the country in scoring, and everybody talked about, you know, how what are you going to do without Diego? Well, you know, Max Humitz came in, and he was a top-five scorer, and then what happens when Max leaves? And then it was Louis Badon and, you know, other guys along the, along the way. So, you know, we, we do have questions because we lost some of our top scorers. Uh, but we feel like internally we have the pieces in place to uh, to step that up, you know, maybe a little bit more by committee at times, but also some key guys that can step up and provide that offense. And, uh, you know, a couple of those freshmen, like I said, I think it's, um, you know, a class that's pretty, pretty highly ranked uh, in the CCHA and nationally. 
and a few of those guys will come in and, and complement that. You know, uh, Johnny Harrington's been really good early on, uh, one of the top scoring players of the British Columbia League. Uh, Regan Milburn, very similarly a top player out of BC, um, amongst other guys. Jack Blanchett, I think, led the BCHL in goal score last year for defensemen, um, and a lot of those guys were leaders on those teams. So the locker room's in great shape right now, and a lot of excitement to hit that ice. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we see the polls come out, and then we'll use that for some motivation and a little chip, and we need that back. You know, we're a couple years removed from a, a playoff championship and an NCAA tournament appearance, and our goals don't change. You know, we want to get back to that level, hanging banners uh, in our building that's uh, very storied and, and a lot of championships there. Uh, we got to get back to that level, and, um, you know, we'll have our work cut out for us to get there. Thanks, Damon. Question first from Brad. Hey, Damon. Uh, thanks for doing this, guys. Um, Damon, you touched on the idea of uh, some systems adjustments um, with this group, with the with the freshmen you got coming in and the returning guys you have. Uh, maybe maybe take us through what kind of adjustments, what you can tell us about, uh, you know, what kind of adjustments you guys are making. Sure. Thanks, Brad. I think one of the things that we um, you know, as we analyze things and we look at the incoming class with 13 new players, uh, you know, there's some simplification, um, you know, 11 of those being freshmen. So they've got to adjust to college hockey. Uh, I've always been a big believer and we want to put people, whether it's a player, a staff member, you want to put them in positions where they can succeed and, and find success early on. Um, so we've done that by, by modifying a few things we're doing. Again, some simplification. I don't want to get too much into the adjustments we'll make there, um, but we want to make sure that we're helping the young guys acclimate. Part of that um, early on here is putting maybe a freshman D with an upperclassman D. They'll help them through some of the way we practice, uh, the way we play, uh, but then also structurally, Brad, as you kind of alluded to, you know, we will make some adjustments that way that we want to um, you know, help those guys find success early on and get off to a good start. Dave Ellis? Yeah, Dave Ellis from TV6 and Fox UP and Marquette. Wits, there are a lot of games last year. You played really well for 40, 45, 50 minutes, and there were just a couple of stretches that ended up costing you in the end. How do you get these guys to play that full 60-minute game and get them to the end result that you want? Yeah, well, thanks, Dave. Um, you know, there, there's a few different. I, I mentioned our locker room a little bit already, Dave, and, um, you know, that, that's so important in our sport, in any sport, but you got to have the right culture, you got to have the right people on the bus, and um, it was a challenge last year. It wasn't the way, the where it needed to be, um, not through a lack of, you know, quality leaders or anything along that lines, but um, it wasn't in order, and that showed especially early on. I think as the year progressed, um, you know, we, we, we got through some of those issues. We were able to solve some of those either from the playing group or from the coaching staff. And we were a much better team the second half, a much different team the second half. So we learned a little bit uh, throughout the course of the season what it takes. And then obviously everything we're doing right now, you know, we've got a new strength coach in here, Liam Counts, done a phenomenal job with our guys. Uh, we've had a lot of quality strength coaches come through here in my 10 years, uh, none better than Liam. So, you know, he's setting the foundation in place for us to be able to play those hard minutes. You know, we'll go on the road early on down to East Lansing and have a great, um, you know, road trip and, and a tough opponent, not a conference. Um, you know, and, and getting off to a good start, Dave, will help us with that confidence and, and learning what it takes to close out 60 minutes. Him? Coach, Tim Rapley from Flow. I see that uh, Harry Roy is going to be wearing a C this year. We all know of him as a big-time shooter. Can you talk about some of his intangibles and some of the skills that we may not be aware of of Harry? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Tim. Uh, again, as we talk about the locker room and the culture, uh, he's a phenomenal young man. Um, he, he loves his teammates. He loves the game of hockey. Um, he takes care of his teammates, and so I think that starts there a little bit for Harry in terms of an intangible. Um, there, there's not many guys you could ask that, that you want to be in your wedding or be there for you, you know, tomorrow or 10 years from now. Uh, so a tremendous young man, a great human being, uh, away from the ice, in the locker room. And then, like you said, on the ice, he, he's known for that scoring ability and that shooting ability. That'll be important that he does that for us. But, you know, he's going to be a guy that's counted on in all facets of the game, five on five, power play, penalty kill. Um, so he'll bring, you know, just a well-rounded game and, and, a, and a great young man to our team. And I think our last question here, Mike McMahon. Uh, hey, Coach, you talked a little bit about the recruiting process. I'm just curious, kind of looking at it, obviously. 
it seems like a lot of players from the British Columbia League, a lot of players from the North American League, was that a specific target uh, in putting this class together? And at the same time, they could obviously have a pretty big impact as freshmen just because the class is so large. Um, what were some of the intangibles you looked for in these players, both on and off the ice? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, I mean, th those in, in, in you know you, your job, uh, the the job you do following recruiting, uh, you can probably safe to say you know we don't care where they play or where they come from. You know, we're a team that's had a pretty heavy international flavor um, going back a few years and still have those sprinkled through our lineup. But uh, um, you know, we want to go find the best players wherever they are. They might be in our backyard. Um, you know, certainly want to be great in the state of Michigan as a as a you know story program in the state. We want to do a great job in our backyard. But uh, you know, we don't we don't have a preference where they play, where they come from we want to find the right type of young men that yes fit us in the locker room but you know certainly have to be good enough on the ice it just so happened last year's class was a little bit um, you know slanted to those those leagues for whatever reason uh, but I think that kind of shifts year to year a little bit and um, you know that, that'll shift back but we want good hockey players we want uh, you know great student athletes and you know we can be very successful when those match up and I think Mike York um, and DJ Goldstein have done a really good job to, to plug some holes and recognize those areas and you know, kind of get us back on track here a little bit.